Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Angeles Almaraz. For those of you that don't know me, um, I am the network and training manager uh, at Prehealth Dreamers. And today I'm really, really excited to have Sabrina join us as the speaker during the Just Getting Started session. Um, that is really all I'll say for now and I'll, I'll pass the mic over to Sabrina. All right, thank you so much, Angeles. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see your faces. It's been a little while since I've done a workshop online. Um, so my name is Sabrina Jimenez. I use she, her, AI pronouns, and I'll be your facilitator today. And I say facilitator because I hope that this time that we spend together is more of an interactive experience than a lecture. I don't want to just talk the whole time. I'm going to be asking you all questions. I'm going to be asking you um, for your feedback on certain parts. And if at any point, uh, something I just would love for all of you is to resource yourself in this time. I know some people just got off work. Some people are getting ready for bed. Whatever the case may be, if you need to eat, you need to drink water, you need to like sit on your couch with your dog in your blanket, like do what you need to do for you. Um, and if you have something that maybe you want to write with, there's going to be some questions. They're not going to be for me. They're going to be for you that you can reflect on. So if you want to have a journal nearby or your notes app open on your phone, you're welcome to do that. All right. So to get started, I actually want to ask you all ask in, you the all in the chat. Oh, oh. Am I hearing double or is it just okay, it went away. Um in the chat, if you call and let me know what comes to mind when you hear the phrase starting your own business. Tell me what words come to mind. Tell me what comes up for you. Just give me a little bit of background in terms of what you feel happens when you hear those words. What happens in your body? What happens in your mind? Starting your own business. You're also welcome to unmute yourself. Daunting, scary. Thank you for sharing, Crystal. What else are folks feeling when they think about starting their own business? Creativity. independent, financial security. Love it. Thank you all for sharing. So the reason I ask is because I think everyone here is going to have their own reasons for wanting to start their own business. And I want to name that like, whatever your motivation is, it is valid. And it is something that you can follow and like pursue. Um, the reason I named this workshop just getting started is because I want to make sure we frame the idea of entrepreneurship as a process. It is not something that happens overnight. It is not something that's going to be one and done. It is an ever evolving, ever changing kind of process that you're gonna have with yourself. Um, so I just wanted to kind of frame it, naming that so that we know that this isn't um, like a finish line type of thing. It's an ongoing thing that we're doing together. So I want to also ground us in gratitude. So I am facilitating this uh, workshop from Occupied Hahamangna Lands, which is colonized as Pasadena, California, in Greater Quiche, Tongva, Gabrielino, Gabrielino territory. Um, and I just, you know, want to acknowledge that on this land there are there's a lot of history, and there is a lot of history in the land surrounding this land and of the people who took care of this land before any of us got here. Um, so just honoring that there's a lot of power here and that we get to channel a lot of that power when we're doing this work and when we're doing it with a lot of intentionality. I also wanna take this moment for anybody who needs to ground themselves with spirit and just check in with any forms of gratitude that you need, knowing that you know I'm grateful that you're here I'm grateful that you made time for yourself to show up today to whatever piqued your interest about today. I'm excited for it. And then also to call forward any relations that you're grateful for in this moment that really help you feel empowered. Um, and for me, one of my biggest gratitude is Angeles. Um, I met you so long ago, and this opportunity comes from an organization that we joined together in undergrad when both of us were like, what is happening? What is going on? Um, and there's a few other folks who are in that organization that are here too. So I just want to offer a lot of gratitude for the relationships that we've built, the relationships we're going to build, the relationships that we're nourishing, and recognize that gratitude is a practice that you should and 
that you should really center when you're thinking about entrepreneurship um because there's a lot of things that come up and so staying grateful really helps move forward I also want to offer my gratitude to pre-health dreamers. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity to gather information and gather folks together so that we can do this work um, and really come together as a community in ways that, that we don't often get to see. Um, so I'm really excited to have you all here and really, really grateful for PhD for allowing me to be here. So I want to make an acknowledgement that I don't know what it's like to be undocumented. I do know what it's like to have a family member be deported. Um, I have witnessed my loved ones be unable to travel, to work, to receive support and resources. And so I named that because I want to be transparent. And I want to share that my intention today is to share as much information as possible that I've gathered so that folks who happen to be undocumented and want to start a business have the tools they need to to be able to do that because not only are you worthy of doing it and deserving of doing it, but you're absolutely capable. All right, so the teacher in me, cause that's my background, um, goes to learning objectives. And so at the end of this workshop, I want participants to be able to assess where they are in their entrepreneurial journey and where they wanna go to discuss how your existing skill sets and experiences can support you in launching a business and to consider how, because this is the most important part, that you can center wellness for yourself and for your community as you pursue becoming your own boss. That was a lot. Any questions, any comments, anything that people wanna share before we keep going? We're chilling? All right, cool. So in, the box in front of you, you'll see a logo. This is the logo for my business. And I, it, my business name is Pasito por Pasito LLC. And there is a lot of significance to the logo that was built for me or drawn for me by my niece. Um, and so I just want to share a little bit about that. Um, my business really doesn't have, I don't operate on the like mission, vision, pillars. I didn't form my business that way. I formed it as a way to do all the things that I love, which include birth work, dancing, yoga, and education, and do them in whatever way I wanted, bringing them all together um, with my skill set. So the image in front of you is blue corn, which is where I'm from and where my family's from in Mexico. That's what it looks like. That's what it looked like before corn became a GMO product. Um, and so as you see an adult hand and a child's hand reaching for that corn, the vision for this really came from us being able to pass down ancestral wisdom in ways that are healthy and in ways that support our well-being and support generational healing. Um, it's said that when we start to heal ourselves, we heal seven generations backward and seven generations forward. And that's really the hope here is that all the pain and suffering that the folks before me in my bloodline have that the folks moving forward don't have to experience it in the same way. The colors, I am a bright color kind of person. I don't know how to do anything basic. So <laughs> I chose colors that felt warm to me and that, you know, this doesn't look like a regular logo. I feel like a lot of people try to keep it like minimalist and simple, but there's nothing simple about what I'm trying to do with my business. And so I wanted that to be clear in the logo. Um, similarly, this is not how my business started and being open to change is a big, important piece. When I first started thinking about opening a business, I only wanted to do birth work. I thought, you know, it's a lot. I'm just going to do my doula stuff. Um, so this is the original logo for the original business that I was going to do. And I want to talk a little bit about why I named it Sabiduria Confiada. What that translates to in English is confident wisdom. And that is the feeling that I want my clients to experience when they work with me, that they feel confident in the decisions that they're making. So for some context, I am a doula. That is like my primary career. Um, and what that means is I'm an emotional and physical support person for birthing people during their pregnancy, labor, delivery, and postpartum um, time. So We'll talk a little bit more about what that means. And if any of you are interested in birth work, I'm very excited to talk about that. Um, and similarly, the, the logo comes with just a lot of love, the deep roots, 
that spread out farther than we can see on top the nest right where we get to nurture and get to come together and you know this is where if you think about birdies right like this is where all of the nurturing happens right we stay here we keep each other warm we bring you food and that that feeling of warmth and nurturing is also something I wanted to convey in a logo um also I'm a Leo and those are my eyebrows. This is a sun because I love the summer. Like you really get to make things about you when you start a business. And I chose to make it about me like this. So I just wanted to share that for a little bit of context. Um, so what did it look like to get to this point? I think a lot of times growing up in the United States, we are inundated with messages that like, you should know what you're doing by 18. I don't know who started that idea. But nobody at 18 knows what they're doing. We just don't. We at, at 22, you still kind of don't know what you're doing. We don't get a prefrontal cortex. Like our brain is not fully developed until 24, 25. For some of us, it takes a little longer, right? And to expect ourselves to know what the next 80 years of our life are going to look like, this is where I offer some self-compassion. So my journey started in wanting to be when I was younger, I wanted to be Olivia Benson from Law & Order SVU. I just wanted to like fight the bad guys. And she was just a bad, you know, she's a baddie. And I wanted to be like her. So once I realized I wasn't really trying to be a cop, I was like, oh, this isn't how it's going to look. I, when I went to UCLA as an undergrad, I pr pursued psychology as my first uh, interest, right? And over time and with the context of being a first generation college student, you know, one of the few brown people on campus. Um, Psychology didn't work out for me. There were a lot of barriers in the way that it was set up as a major at UCLA that didn't allow me to pursue it in the ways that I wanted. So what that led me to was Chicano, Chicano, Chicanx studies. Um, and that major is my heart. It is everything because it's not one thing. It's everything. And being able to study politics, being able to study art, being able to study culture and society and all of these different things really opened my eyes to the fact that I didn't have to choose one thing or another. So towards the end of, I think my third year at UCLA, I was in an education class and I met a really amazing professor who didn't look like a professor. And this is what I love about being able to do things on your own is things don't look the way people think they will. So this professor had a chain, he was wearing cargo shorts, he had some Cortezes on and he was cussing. He was cussing up a storm and I was like, ooh, you could be a professor like this, let me see. So I kept in touch with him and I followed him to grad school. And I got my master's in the art of teaching, urban ed and social justice. It's a very specific master's degree in basically fighting white supremacy, ableism and all of the other isms, right? Like very intentionally within schools. So I went from wanting to be Olivia Benson to wanting to be a teacher, to wanting uh, to a psychologist, to wanting to be a teacher. And then I became a teacher. Mm. and I burnt out very hard I burnt out over and over again and I kept going back because I thought I didn't have a choice I was like well I locked in I already got the degree I have to do this like so I kept going and over time what that looked like was becoming an alcoholic and I think a lot of times in our culture if you grew up around a lot of folks that were drinking, it's a very romanticized practice, right? Like we are like, oh, I need a drink, right? And so we normalize it. And so I did. And so through college, through grad school, that was my norm. And I was like, oh, but I'm not an alcoholic. I'm like graduating. I have these degrees. Like I have these leadership positions. I'm fine, right? I wasn't fine. And so it's part of the reason I named my organization Pasito por Pasito. When you name your LLC, these are the words besides your name that you're going to speak a million times for the rest of the time that you have your business. So I wanted my business name to be a reminder to me about why I started it. And what it was for me was taking my power back. It was taking my power back from alcohol and giving it away when I couldn't cope with my reality. It was taking my power back from organizations and institutions like school districts that were disrespectful because that's what they were and harmful to me. Um, and so there's, there's so much intention that can go into your business when you give yourself the time to really, really center why you're doing it. So after I burnt out as a teacher, which happened in the 
last semester of 2020, like that school year, um, I moved back home, moved back in with my parents. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I stayed unemployed for a few months until I met someone who knew somebody who got me a job. Because honestly, that's how we get jobs, right? I had applied to like 40, 50 positions in three months, not a single callback. I knew someone who knew someone, I was hired. And <clears throat> I think when I went into the nonprofit, I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. Like they're saying all these things and their mission and their vision and their, their vision and their values. And it didn't work out that way. Um, I felt very tokenized at the organization that I was in. I felt very, I felt like my creativity was stifled. And so I, I didn't know being a doula was a thing until the pandemic. I had never heard of this job before. I didn't know it was a job. And once I found out and I was already kind of disassociating from my nonprofit job as soon as I got it, I channeled all of my energy because we couldn't go out. I channeled it all into doula school. So I started doula school in April, 2021, and I graduated April, 2022. Um, it is April, 2023, right? And so that happened really fast. And I thought I had found my dream job when I was a teacher because I loved working with teens and I loved doing what I was doing, but something wasn't, the math wasn't mathing. And now I'm four births in to being a doula. And I if I wish I had known this was a job when I was 18, because I probably wouldn't have gone to school in the same ways, right? Like, but we can't know these things. And I think everything I went through on the way to becoming a doula is what makes me successful as a birth worker. And so I want to recognize that like all of our journeys are going to look different. What it looks like for you to become an entrepreneur is not what it's going to look like for the person in the box next to you in the Zoom call. It's going to be entirely different. It's going to feel different. It's going to require different types of resources, different types of um, understandings. And I just want to offer that grace for yourself to not know what you want to do, to not know 100% how it's going to look, um, and to know that there's no rush to getting there. I know a lot of times we're looking for the logistical information on how to start a business, but I want to recognize how emotional this process is. It is draining when it comes to, like it requires a lot of energy, but when you get to do it on your terms, it's a kind of energy that doesn't feel like work. I was telling Angeles before the call started, I have a client in the hospital right now. I've been in the hospital for the last two days. And even though I've slept maybe like a total of four hours in two days, I don't feel, do I, do I look tired? Like I am so energized by feeling purposeful. And I think that's where as a teacher and as an, in a program manager in a nonprofit, the one that I was in specifically, I didn't feel purposeful. I didn't feel like I was changing anything. I didn't feel like my, my skills were being used. I felt like my creativity was dying. I felt like I was dying inside. And so I, the choice to open a business for me was about more than survival. I didn't want to be in survival mode anymore. It's exhausting. I wanted to thrive. I wanted to do things the way I wanted. And I know if anyone has, on this call has met me before, I, my phrase that has grown, <laughs> that has excited me since college is I do what I want. I have an authority problem. I know that I have it. So why am I working for people who don't do things the way I like? So all of that to say, right, it's going to look different. We got to offer ourselves grace and you got to be clear about why you want to do things. I know for me, it was, about, I don't want to do what other people tell me because I don't like the way they do it. So that's how I'm going to do this. So what it looks like today um, is we're going to do this in four parts. So why entrepreneurship? We're going to talk about this idea of knowing that you're ready. We're going to go through the self-employment options, which is where um, I have a resource for you all that's like linked and everything. So you don't have to like copy and paste all these links and things they are going to be in one folder. We're going to talk about operating with integrity because beyond being a teacher and a doula and a dancer and a yoga instructor and an educator, I am a community organizer. And at the root of everything that I do is social justice. And at the root of everything that I do is grassroots work. Um, and so I want to really name the ways that grassroots organizing has supported me in building a business, knowing that capitalism is like the worst thing in the world and we have to participate in it to survive doing it on our own terms in ways that are healthy right because it is what and I don't want to say it is what it is but I you know unless we start burning stuff down this is where we are at this moment 
And then lastly, I'll share logistics, which is literally like, what do you do? Like, what are the steps to open this business? And I'm just checking the chat. Okay, cool. Um, so in terms of entrepreneurship, why? If you're considering this and you're like, oh, I don't know if I really want to do this. There's two big reasons that I feel like people can consider if you're being swayed towards it. The first one is autonomy, that do what I want kind of thing. Your intentions are going to look very different from that of an organization. When you open your own business, your time belongs to you. Your time is not run by an Outlook calendar. It's not run by other people's priorities. It's run by you. That's a lot of responsibility, but it's also a lot of freedom. When it comes to stress levels, if I'm going to be stressed out, the person who's going to stress me out is me, not other people. That was a big thing for me because when I joined that organization, a lot of the stress that was passed down to me in my role was because other people were getting pressure from people above them. And that didn't feel good. I didn't like being the one to, to receive the trickle down stress, right? Because that's what it felt like. And lastly, when it comes to autonomy, operations. Organizations all operate differently and all of our brains operate differently. Certain organizations operate very much on rush timing. And for someone who has managed anxiety for such a long time, being rushed is a trigger. And being in a position where I'm constantly being rushed was not healthy for me. It impacted my digestion, my eating. It impacted my sleep. It, it, I was grinding my teeth every night, right? Like it just wasn't healthy for me. And as I open my own business, I get to decide what those operations look like. I get to decide my working hours. I get to decide what platforms I use. I get to decide what a process looks like to get from point A to point B. The second one was very related to that is just healing, right? Like I have been nonstop from kindergarten through my master's degree. I didn't take a break. It was exhausting. And I've burnt out more than once and it's looked different every time. But being an entrepreneur, the first step to opening a business is learning how to rest. And I know that that is a really hard thing to put into practice because there's not a lot of space that allows for it here. There's not a lot of ways that we're taught to rest. We're even taught to record us resting to prove that we did it, right? We're taught to like make it look Instagrammable. That is not what rest looks like, right? So part of being an entrepreneur is really giving yourself that compassion. Um, coming back to the point of being an anxious person for me, I needed to determine my pace. I needed to be the one to say, this is when I'm going to open a website. This is when I'm going to take on clients. This is when I'm going to get a business license. I needed that for myself. And lastly, when you work in a lot of spaces that are, that operate still on white supremacy values, right? You tend to question yourself a lot. And I was really tired of second guessing myself. So what it did for me was give me a sense of confidence and a sense of I know what I'm doing. Like, why am I waiting on other people to tell me that I know what I'm doing? I know what I'm doing. I can do this. And I want to name that like my business was born on this 99 cent notebook from the 99 cent store. Like it doesn't have to look like a business plan off of some fancy website or designed on Canva. It looks like a bunch of post-its and really raggedy papers for me, right? Like that's what it looked like. Um, and that's what's felt good. So in that, talking about how do you know when you're ready? In the chat, I want to ask you all, what does that mean? What does being ready mean? What have you been told being ready implies? Not even just about opening a business, but just in general, what does being ready mean? Because this word is always, out. are you ready to be in a relationship? Are you ready to have this job? Are you ready to move out? What does that mean? Rosa says having a plan, having all the information, okay? Being confident, yep. So we're talking logistical readiness, we're talking educational readiness, we're talking emotional readiness, right? There's so many ways to that and I wanna uplift that, right? Like there's not one way to be ready because when I got my doula certifications last April, 
you know, was I ready to launch an LLC? No, because that was exhausting. And some people think like, oh, well, I'm going to get the certificate and then I'm going to launch the business. The way the bank account is set up, it didn't look like that, right? Like that is not how it could work out for me at the time. So we're talking about readiness in a as a multifaceted idea before we, you know, before we decide like, do I want to open a business? But what it really takes too is, especially acknowledging that most most people that are opening businesses, the service that you're selling or the product is you. You are your own product. You are the brand, right? And you don't necessarily have to brand yourself and become like this personality online, but it does require a level of vulnerability. It requires a level of transparency and it absolutely requires a level of self-awareness. So when it comes to that, there is a lot of resources at your disposal to really get grounded and centered in your sense of ready. For me, what that looked like was a lot of therapy. For me, what that looked like was getting sober. I would never have been able to complete birth work, school, and opening a business had I still been drinking. And that's my reality. It may look different for other people, but for me, sobriety was a mandatory step in knowing that I felt good about moving forward as an entrepreneur. Um, if any of you have heard of the book, The Curanderex Toolkit, it looks like this. Oh, and it won't let me show you because of that. But it's called the Curanderex Toolkit. And on page 63, there is something called a personal healing inventory. And what it offers you is 11 sections of reflective questions just to get to know yourself. Because when you become an entrepreneur, you need to be aware of your triggers. You need to be aware of how you show up in relationships. You need to be aware of your spaces for growth. And you need to be aware of your strengths. So a lot of that being ready, having the information, having a plan, being confident, no one can tell you that for yourself. You have to you have to decide that and you have to feel good about it. Only you can determine if you're ready. Now, with that, I also want to name that there are just some truths that we need to accept about opening a business. The first is that it's emotional. There, there's not really a way to open a business and not feel something many, maybe many some things, right? And so acknowledging like, how do I manage stress? What do I need when I am stressed? That's part of getting ready, right? Knowing like, I can't have things on my calendar Monday to Friday from eight to five, like that's not going to work for me. Knowing that emotionally is going to be supportive. Um, we need to accept that there's going to be things we don't know. That's just the way it works. Like you have to be open to things changing, to things needing to go a different direction. And in that, that last hard truth is you got to be adaptable. Like you got to be willing to compromise. And I don't mean that in like compromising on your intentions or the way you want to operate your business, but more so in really the logistics of it, right? Like what step is going to come first and how am I going to manage this or that? Being adaptable is going to give you the, the space and the grace to open an organization or an LLC or become a contractor in ways that feel good for you. Because the one gift that opening an LLC has given me is I don't feel like I work. I love my job. I love what I do. I love the way I do it. I love the people I work with. And that gift I know after working in the places I've worked is priceless. So if it means that it ha I have to deal with these emotions to have that, fine. If it means that there's going to be things I don't know, okay. And if it means that I got to adjust as I go, great. Then I'm accepting that because that's going to, when you tie yourself to an expectation, it really, it leaves room for disappointment, right? Like it leaves room for like, oh, but I wanted it this way. And it just don't work out that way sometimes. So these truths, really accepting them and working with them, getting comfortable with them are going to be supportive in you opening your business. So with that, let's get into the logistics of it. As undocumented folks, you are able to be self-employed. Like that is period, point blank period. You are, there is nothing barring you from opening an LLC, which is a limited liability company, or from becoming an independent contractor. The way that that's going to work is going to look different. It's going to depend on your field. 
it's very hard to determine, say, for example, the difference between the way it's going to look for a nurse, an anesthesiologist, a physical therapist, a occupational therapist, and a caretaker. All of those are in the public health realm. None of those journeys are going to look the same. Some of them might benefit more from being an LLC, and some of them are going to be better as contracting and consulting. So a big difference with LLCs is that you're taking, I want to say responsibility, but in the case of any legal action, an LLC is your protecting buffer. It is, for example, I'm a doula and I have a dissatisfied customer, client, right? And they're like, you know what? You didn't give me what I wanted. You, and so I'm going to sue you. Okay. They're not going to sue me because the contract they signed is with my LLC. They're going to sue my LLC. That means that my personal finances are not going to be impacted. That means that my legal like background is not going to be impacted in the same ways. My LLC is my protection. As a contractor or a consultant, which is someone that you know gets hired for specific tasks, specific projects, whether by an individual or an organization, the difference there is really in the taxes and in the amount of legal protection that you have. So as a doula, I need to have doula insurance, right? And depending on what realm you're in, insurance looks different. It's a cost to consider. It's, you know, what type of coverage you want. These are things that are going to require your time to research and find out. There's there's no way that I could tell you all like, oh, this is how you're going to do it if you're I can't because it, the way that you show up in each of those roles is also going to look different. Um, so biggest difference between an LLC and contracting also comes with the money. As a contractor or consultant, you are paid in amounts that are like flat amounts, right? And they don't tax it. You submit something called like a 1099. Um, and you need to basically take 30% of whatever you're paid as a contractor and put it away because that's going to be what you pay in taxes later. Calif at least in California is 30%. It's ridiculous amount of money, right? So knowing what state you're in and what amount to put away from each job you're contracted for is important. In terms of an LLC, you have a few different options. You can just be an LLC and that's a limited liability company that exists on its own. Then there's something beyond that where your LLC, what I've done, is become an S corp. What that looks like is I am now my own employee. So I am my employer and my employee. I can put myself on payroll. And what that does, it comes back to taxes, is it mitigates how much of um how much of the taxes I'm responsible for. So as an LLC S corp, I would and I'm going to give you an accountant's information to explain this better because I am not a certified accountant. The way he explained it to me is essentially as an S Corp, I don't have to take on the full brunt of the taxes because when you work in the United States and in California, you got to pay Medicare, um, Social Security, you got to pay disability. Like there's so many reasons they take money out of your check, right? As an LLC S Corp, part of that falls on your LLC itself so that you're not paying all of it in the same ways. Um, that's a lot. You don't need to memorize that. You don't have to be super clear on that right now because we're just getting started, okay? Having a general idea of the difference between those two is important. Um, and the reason I elected for an LLC was for the tax protection was because I didn't want things tied to my name in case I still needed to work somewhere else and like on my own time having a full-time or, or part-time or whatever. Um, and because as a contractor and consultant, it's just so much more work. <laughs> um, at least it felt that way for me to like have to put money away a certain way or, or things like that. So it's going to look different for you. It's going to look different depending on how you want your business to look on what services you're offering. Um, so for example, if you're offering yourself as the service and you're a caretaker, right, then you need to decide, do I want to charge, you know, do I want this as an LLC where like I can put myself on payroll and like pay myself this way? Or am I just going to like get contracts back to back and like make sure I'm taking the money out on my own to put away and pay for taxes later? 
So it just depends on what you want to do and what it's going to look like. And I have, I'm actually going to share that now. So I'm going to give you access to a folder and you're going to see a resource that looks like this is just called resource list. And in it, it's linked to a million things. But let me share the link with you first to make sure you all can copy and paste it into your own. So this is the link to the Google Drive folder. It is going to stay open forever. <laughs> you can share it with other people. Um, you're very welcome. I do not believe in gatekeeping information. I think that is like, why? You know, there's no reason to get, we, there is room for all of us at the top and we don't even got to be on top. We could just be on the same line. We could all, we're all together in this. So I share all that to say, um, this resource list, what I put together was very logistical in terms of like, what are the legal ways to do this? Because that's the, you can open a business and not do any of this legal stuff. You could just be getting paid under the table and say that you have a business. No one's going to come after you in that way. Like, you know, like you could be a babysitter and that can be your business. It just looks different when it becomes official in ways that like you get your own bank account as a business or not. Right. So this is, if you want to open it in all the legal aspects of having a business. So in terms of opening an LLC, there are multiple platforms where you can do it. You can absolutely go to YouTube University and do all of the paperwork yourself. But part of my self-inventory was knowing that I don't like paperwork, that I don't know how to read. I don't understand any of the paperwork that came along with my LLC. And I recognized that early on. I tried to do YouTube University first. And I was like, oh, I have a master's. I have a bachelor's. Like, I've been a teacher. I should be able to figure this out. I don't speak legal. And I had to just accept that for myself. So what I did is I chose to use Zen Business. I, 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 I looked at Zen Business Inc. file and LegalZoom. I chose Zen Business because someone that I knew had used it. I trusted their judgment. They walked me through their process. So what I did is I linked a workflow here using a platform called Tango. Love that platform. It essentially creates um, workflows for you. But I also listed it as, an LLC, as a PDF in this folder. It's a long PDF because it goes step by step, click by click on how to open an LLC using Zen Business. And the reason I wanted to give it to you every step of the way is so that you don't necessarily have to go and create a full account before like just getting a preview of what that looks like. So I went step by step in terms of what it looks like, what it requires. And this is something that, you know, definitely you're going to have to review on your own time. Um, and something that I'm going to leave open, you're going to have my contact information in case you want to reach out with questions, but this lives here and it looks like really long because it's 28 pages, but that just means there's 28 click steps, if that makes sense. It records every click. Um, and what it looks like on Zen Business is the first thing they ask you, and this is why you want to kind of think about it. I'm gonna, the very first thing it asks you is what is your preferred company name? So when you're going to name your business, that's an emotional thing right? This requires you to have already sat down and thought about what you want to offer, what you want people to know off top about your business, right? So off top, if they hear pasito por pasito, they're going to know I'm bilingual, period, right? Like I'm making that clear already. They don't really, it's a little ambiguous what I'm doing, right? But for me, I was like, maybe that'll interest them. That's what it was for me. Um, so starting there, it starts with your name, what it goes into is like what state you're in, um, because this is the great thing about Zen Business and all those other platforms is they already know the rules in the state that you're in for how to open a business. Again, I don't speak legal. They did. I don't know how many paperwork for me, but I just preferred to pay them and save myself that stress. Um, and we'll talk about startup costs in a minute. So this is where it kind of starts and what it looks like as you go through the workflow, it just kind of it gathers um, information about you, like how much experience do you have running a business so that the platform knows what kind of information to gather for you as well. Cause you get a lot of like, it sends you articles and it opens, you know, certain links for you. So that's what this workflow is about. I'm gonna not go through all 28 pages cause that would not be the best use of our time, but it's there for you to review and you'll have, um, you'll have my contact information to talk about it if you have questions, okay? Um, similarly, when we were talking about what it takes to get ready, uh, these are some lessons from grassroots organizing that I want to share with you all. Um, 
they're there for you. You can access them at any point, but I want to read them out loud so that you can hear them and know that I specifically wrote them for you. You are enough and you have everything you need within you already. If you want to start a business, you can. So if you need to say that to yourself, like I can start a business, that is a very powerful statement to hear from your own voice, okay? I can start a business. It's about grassroots organizing, we do what we can with what we have, where we are. Like I said, my business started on a notebook from the 99 cent store. All of my ideas were born there. You want to start small, shameless plug, pasito por pasito. You're taking this a step at a time, knowing that you're not going to have a corporation in two weeks, okay? You want to give yourself this time to build out your vision. So even before you go to this platform and decide to start filing paperwork, give yourself time to have, at least for me, it wasn't just my notebook. I also got a bunch of those big old posters from the 90th sister, put them on my wall and went ham with a pack of markers. I was like, what do I want to name it? What do I want to offer? How much do I want to charge it? Just let my brain kind of go. I asked for a lot of help opening my business. Every piece, every material I have as a doula was donated or fundraised for by my community members. And that makes it for me all the more special. Accepting help and knowing that you're worthy of that is so important. I have someone helping me with my website because again, I know my strengths and I do not have the patience. It's just not for me. I'm allowing people to show up and help me. Are they going to do it exactly how I want? Hopefully. But I have to be adaptable and know that if I'm not going to do it myself, I have to compromise sometimes, right? Um, utilizing resources available to you. Everything I started with was free. I got free accounts to all the uh, platforms I was using. I didn't get like the premium subscription of anything. I was like, let me use all these free platforms first and we'll talk about which ones. Um, but utilizing the resources of it. There's so many out there, especially if you're connected with organizations like PH Dreamers, if you're connected to organizations like Undocu Professionals or Immigrants Rising, they have so much information. Also what I've gathered for you, like in, I gathered their information for you specifically about business and the other resource. An emotional point is you cannot compare yourself to anyone else because say you and someone else are both you both just got certified in massage therapy, right? And they're going to open their business in their vision. If you try to compare your vision of a massage therapy business to theirs, you're going to be, you're living, you're letting them live rent free in your head, but you're also not giving yourself the space to do things on your own terms. So the biggest strength I think you can recognize in yourself is that absolutely no one else is you. Nobody's going to offer the things that you offer the way that you offer them. That's just that's just what it is. Nobody could do it like you and that's your strength. Sometimes I think we're taught to think that nobody can I can't do it like everyone else as a weakness. No, flip it. No one can do it like me and that's a strength. And you got to recognize that in yourself and be give yourself that credit. Like give yourself that credit of like I got this. I like what I produce is valid. It's enough. It's good. Um, you also want to stay true to your values <clears throat> when it comes to integrity. You want to feel good about what you're doing. You want to have a clean conscience about the ways that you're operating. And so sitting down and recognizing what your values are super important for me. One of those is I won't take blood money. Like I won't take money from organizations that do awful things. I don't care how much they want me. I don't care how great as a queer, disabled, indigenous person that they want to like first gen, like paint me as a token. If I don't trust them, I'm not going to, even if it's for money, I'm not going to work with them because I don't believe in what they do. And I don't know where their money comes from, but it probably came from somewhere that I don't believe in. Right. So for me, that's what mattered. And I also wanted to center, like, I want to work with queer, trans, black, indigenous people, people of the global majority. I'm not looking to support white folks that's not my strength right that's part of my values is i'm like i know who i'm targeting as a client um and that matters to me that may not matter in the same ways to you but that's my value lastly and this is the most important point for me at least is you got to take care of your body you cannot do anything for anyone else if you are not physically well and i have learned that the very hard way um you got to take care of your mind 
You got to nourish your spirit. And a lot of people leave this out in the mind, body, spirit thing. You got to take care of your inner child. Because at the end of the day, we are all out here. Yeah, we're adults, but we're walking around as wounded walking, like wounded children, right? And so recognizing that like our five-year-old self deserves a lot of love and our five-year-old self doesn't need to be shamed because they didn't send that email on time. Our five-year-old self doesn't need to be yelled at because they didn't finish the website by the deadline they set. I don't need that. I have enough of other people's voices in my head. I don't need to give that to myself. And so knowing that, centering that is really important and really beneficial for everyone that you're going to support using your LLC as a as an avenue to do that. So I put it as a PDF so you can print it out, post it for yourself. You don't have to. You can cut my logo off if you don't like it. Whatever works for you, you can highlight the ones you like and put them on a post-it. But these are the ones that for me really supported my journey to where I am at this point. And I'm happy with where I am at this point. Am I making $100,000 a year? Absolutely not. Let's recognize that your first year as a business owner, you're not going to make a lot of money. It might have to be a side hustle. I'm okay with that. You can become okay with that. Maybe you will be making 100K in a year and then I'll be taking your workshop because I need to learn how you did that, right? But starting small, that's for you and it lives in this folder. Um, and in this one, all of those um, tutorials regarding like the legal ramifications of things, they live here. So. IRS documents one by one are listed here. Um, the LLC platforms, these are the top three that I found. You can compare their pricing and their services. And you can also compare, look at what they do for you. And you know, if you're the type of resourceful person who can do legal jargon, you can do it for yourself. And then all of the undocu professionals tutorials, um, except for the last one, they're undocu professionals and then it's Immigrants Rising, but these are paid internships that don't require a social. These are short-term internships. These are the difference between what it means to be an employee and to be self-employed. Um, and they're all, typically most of them are accessible in both English and Spanish, but all of those resources are there for you. Um, and they're just a click away. And again, you can share this with as many people as you would like. Um, okay, so we talked about operating with integrity. What do, three, three questions I just have for you to consider for yourself is what do you stand for? What drives you? And what will you create, right? We mentioned creativity earlier. Opening a business really lets you flourish as the creative person that you are. In a lot of spaces, we don't get the space to just create. Your business is the opportunity to do it however you want. When people ask me what my business is about, I can't be like, oh, I do this one thing. I'm like, well, I'm a dance teacher and I'm a yoga instructor and I'm a doula and I do workshops about whatever I want because I have all these skills. And that's what I created. And I'm happy with that. That's what matters. You have to be happy when you're explaining your business. What did I create? Right? Like, what did I make? And for me, I created an opportunity. I created an avenue to independence for myself. Um, so logistics in terms of opening a business in this way. Organizational tools are really important. Um, I'm sure if you've navigated a lot of things in your life already, including higher education, then you have the tools at your disposal that you know are good for you. Um, one that I want to highlight that for me has made all the difference is Trello. Have any of you used Trello before? Anybody know? Okay. Trello was introduced to me by my boss at, at the nonprofit that I was at. And essentially, it's a big old board. So after my, I went through my entire notebook from the 99 cent store of like ideas, I turned it into a Trello board. And what that means is I, these are called lists. These are called cards. And essentially, I outlined every single possible thing I wanted to do. So I made myself a to-do list after I had already created this. I knew I wanted to put together, you know, collateral, marketing collateral. I needed a logo, I needed a headshot, and I needed the name of my business. Those are probably the top three you need when it comes to just establishing yourself in the public eye. So headshot of some sort, and it doesn't have to look like one of those headshots on LinkedIn. I have a reboso on in mine. That's what's important to me. I have big old earrings on. That's important to me. My earrings say like land back. I am clear on who I am in my headshot. My logo was drawn by my niece because I wasn't going to pay a designer because I didn't have that kind of money. 
And also my niece is a teenager who is really creative. And I was like, hey, do you want to do this for me? And I opened the door for her. Opening the door for our friends along the way, priceless. And I can say that because right now I have like four or five friends. All of us are in the same bubble of like, we're just getting started with opening our own business and we're blowing each other's stuff up. We are sharing each other's events. We're going to each other's events and we're making sure other people know that we're doing this together and we're uplifting each other. Um, and then again, the name of your business, what words are you ready to say forever? And when, clearly I wasn't ready yet. I named it birth work, right? I didn't have the rest of it outlined. Um, I knew that I wanted to have a newsletter. This is still in progress. I did this a year and a half ago. I still don't have my newsletter. That's okay. I'm not there yet. My website still working on it services. I tried to think about what can I offer? I have a lot of different certifications. How do I want them to show up? I was trying to think of really creative ways I wanted to charge. I was like, I want all the numbers to match, right? Whatever. Like I let myself be creative and play here. And then I gave myself a monthly income goal. I'm not there yet. I'm hoping in the next year or two, maybe I'll get there. We're working on it, right? Baby steps. I knew I want to open support groups. I'm not there yet. I'm working on it. I named all the different places that people would benefit from seeing my brochures. I haven't dropped them off in all of these places. I dropped them off in a few, right? But I got started. I knew I wanted to have events. Some of these are happening. Some of these are still in progress. But what Trello allowed me to do is just brainstorm and then keep it there without having to constantly like look for this one little note or this one little post-it or this. I just put it all together. And then what I also did was link everything. You can add links and descriptions and PDFs to it. So it kind of exists as like a motherboard this central location of getting all your stuff together. So for me, it was super, super helpful. Because I do consultations, I also got the free version of Calendly. I love Calendly. And I did this way before I opened an LLC just to, I had to decide that I was ready to talk to people about what I had to offer. And so I opened a Calendly. I opened a few days. I decided for me, I like Sunday mornings. I'm only available on Sunday mornings. That is when I can take calls. And I've had, you know, I'm on my fourth birth and I'm contracted for two more. So like, you got to take a chance on yourself in that way. But Calendly is free. It's super easy to use. And people recognize the platform, especially because there's an app for it. So those are two big platforms that I really like. The other is when it comes to marketing online, it is again, I recognize that it, it's not my strength. But I read this book. It's an ebook called Learn the Pincha Internet. And Indihe Mama is her business. Her name is Panketsani, but she has a very lucrative business where it's birth work, ancestral healing, and all of these different things. But she also has something called Indigi Business Kinship. Indig There's like a kinship circle that she creates for people to create businesses on their own terms. Part of that was reading this book and learning how to navigate. Like, you need to know how to have like a, if you if you care about a social media presence you need to know how to use social media, right? Like you need to know how to make your life easier for yourself. And so this was a really good resource that you can get as an ebook online. There is a free sample. Maybe somebody that you know already has it and can like, you know, you can come over and read it. It doesn't take long. I think I read it on my phone in a matter of like an hour and a half, um, but it's very logistical information on how to make your life easier using online platforms and social media. So those three tools, incredible. Trello, Calendly, Learn the pinche internet. All right. In terms of startup costs, my doula bag was funded by community. I, uh, a loved one of mine opened a fundraiser for me. We set a goal at $1,500 and I reached it in three days. People came through because I was vulnerable and I was honest. And I guess I've been nice to some people along the way. So they were like, oh, I'll give you a couple of dollars, right? Like I'll send you something from Amazon. So the startup costs depend on what you're trying to do. If you are trying to open the LLC itself, you need, I would say anywhere between $300 to $500 just to get all the paperwork done. That's if you're using one of those platforms. It's a lot less money if you do it yourself. If you do it yourself, depending on the state you're in, you're looking at $100 to $300 just for the startup costs. It doesn't cost anything to open a bank account. It doesn't cost anything to open a business credit card. Um, I didn't pay for any of my platforms. The only platform that I'm paying for at this very moment is the website that I have yet to build. So that is the only thing I'm paying for on a constant basis because I didn't want bills. 
how am I going to have bills if I don't have clients yet, right? Like I needed to take it a thing at a time. When it comes to clientele, partnerships, and getting hired, I leaned on community that I already knew. When I was younger and they used to send us in school to like sell chocolates like door to door, right, for those fundraisers, I used to try and go into the rich neighborhoods. And my sister taught me a very important lesson early on. Those people don't know you. They don't care what you're doing. If you want to sell these chocolates, why don't you do it right here in our hood? Like, why aren't you doing it right here? They know you. They may not be able to buy 20 of them, but they'll buy one and they're going to tell their friends. So when I realized that I've taken it large up to this point, every single client I've had to this point, I have a mutual friend who was referred, who they referred them to me. So my very first client I met as an organizer. We were just doing organizing work together. They told me they were pregnant. I was like, oh my God, I'm a doula. Can I be your doula? I'll do it all for free so that I can get this experience. And that's what happened. And from there, she was gracious enough to share her experience online with her networks to the point that other people started to notice. And then other people started to notice, right? And so every single person that I have served as a client, I met through someone else through building on relationships that were a mutual reciprocity. Like I'm looking out for you. Hey, I know you're a doula. Oh, I know someone who's pregnant and maybe they would benefit from having you. Let me connect you. So leaning on your existing relationships. And this is where that self-inventory of like, who are you as a person really matters? Because if you don't know how to build relationships, there's going to be new barriers for you. Whereas if you know how to ask for help and accept it, it's going to look different. Um, similarly with getting hired places, I have leaned on the existing partnerships I have. Um, when I first started my business, I wanted to do workshops. And I used I go to this cafe all the time in my town. I love going there. Shout out to my place, Cafe Andina, because I'm literally there all the time. And so the owner has gotten to know me and we're cool. And I support her business by eating there all the time to the point that she supports my business by allowing me to host events in her space, right? I didn't know her before going in there to get a chai latte. Now we're homies and I hug her every time I'm there. And like, you know, so building on the relationships you have and being willing to invest mutually in people that are also doing the same things. That's how I've got, gotten clientele. And I have been busy. I am tired, right? Like that, that, that can be enough. You don't have to have 400,000 followers on Instagram. You don't, I don't even have 500 on my business page, but that doesn't matter because those people don't know who I am. They're not going to share my stuff. A few of the folks on this call, they're out here posting my stuff all the time, right? That's what matters to me. Um, so when we talk in logistics, these are the kinds of things that you want to gather for yourself and think about. When it comes to accounting, I have literally a person who has signed up to be like, I will answer folks' questions. His name is Stepan Stepanian. I went to high school with him. We're homies. I posted on Facebook, hey, I don't know how to do accounting stuff. Can anybody help me? He reached out on Facebook Messenger, and I now have an accountant. He's giving me like, you know, the grace of knowing I'm a new business owner He's explaining things to me step by step. He's sending me articles to help me understand. He has agreed that if any of you have questions regarding the IRS part of it, no matter what state you're in, he can support you in that way. Just let him know that you're my homie because we're all homies now. And he will offer it whatever support he can. He is based in Pasadena, but again, we live in a virtual world now. It's very accessible to get to each other. So his name is Stepan. And... Shout out to him for being amazing because I didn't know what I was going to do. I was getting like all these calls from IRS of like, oh, you this is doing that is doing that freaked me out. And I like started crying and I was like, I need help. And when he said, I can help you. I was like, OK, cool. Thank you. Right. So all that to say, I think I'm going to go through my little these got ripped out of that same notebook. This is how I planned this workshop, too. I think that's everything that I have in terms of collateral to share with you. Thank you so much for your time, for being willing to sit with me and listen to my voice for this long and, you know, giving me these cute little pity laughs at my little jokes. I appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> um, but and if you need, we're going to end the recording at this point, so we'll have time to talk right now. But my Instagram, the top one is my LLC as a whole. 
The second one is my birth work only because I kept that separate because it's just two different audiences I'm targeting. Um, and similarly, my email, if it's specific to birth work because you're interested in becoming a doula, go ahead and hit the Sabiduria Confiada email. If you're interested in anything re related otherwise, hit the email on the top. 